Okay, well, I would like to uh, welcome everybody and um, uh, I am looking forward to uh, this session, which is the cataloger is always right. A user-centered approach for designing and building link data, the link data and editor in Folio. Um, Doug Loins and Gloria Gonzalez will be our presenters, and I wonder if the two of you would like to introduce yourself. Why don't you go first, Gloria? Sure. Uh, happy to be here with everyone today. I am Gloria Gonzalez, the Senior Product Manager for Linked Data Innovation at EBSCO. So I work with Doug on Folio, where we're creating open source features uh, that use linked data. I also work on a service called Bibliograph, as well as a new platform that we're building called the EBSCO Scholarly Graph. And I'm Doug Loins. I'm the product owner uh, for one part of uh, the linked data initiatives that are going on at EBSCO. I'm responsible for um, uh, the effort to build out the new uh, linked data module that will be added to Folio, which you'll learn more about in the presentation. So Susan, should we just share and go? Yeah. Or? Please take it away. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me uh, pull up my presentation. Ch -ch -ch. And one second. Here we go. Let us share. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. This is just the, uh, pardon me, pardon me. This is just the, um, the demo that's going to come. I should stop sharing and try to get the entire screen. Apologies. Uh, okay, desktop. Here we go. This should work. Okay. And here we go. Now you can see this. Okay. All right. So we already introduced ourselves, um, but I wanted to have this opening about the cataloger is always right. Um, how UX um, research um, influenced our um, development of the linked data editor. So here's an outline, uh, a little bit of background explanation about what we mean by the cataloger is always right. And um, we were asked by the LD4 community to um, uh, share as much as we could about extensible observations that we learned. Um, so it's not limited just to this particular product. Um, so uh, we've carved out a, a few slides to uh, to share there. And uh, talking about the Sunflower release, Sunflower is the um, uh, folio uh, flower release, major releases, and um, the link data editor will be um, part of that release. And then I'm finished with the demo, okay? So for the background, the link data editor, uh, it's going to be an expansion of the Folio platform. Um, it's going to al allow catalogers to um, perform uh, uh, cataloging in link data um, as part of their overall workflows. And it's going to run in parallel with mark-based cataloging. So in Folio um, um, environment, um, libraries will be able to um, have both running side by side. Um, as uh, a transition when they're, um, if, if they choose to move from uh, mark-based cataloging to linked database cataloging. And as I said, the production release is scheduled for Sunflower, March of 2025. Okay, so the cataloger is always right. Um, the idea here is, is that um, while we're looking at the systems and how um, the uh, application needs to work, we don't want to lose sight of, in this case, the most important end user is the cataloger themselves. And at some point during the um, project, we were trying to make sure we were getting our priorities straight and um, uh, the themes um, locked down. Um, we decided that it would be super important for us to invest in uh, UX team so that we could really understand how this system would be used by a key part of the uh, workflow, the catalogers. So to that end, we brought in um, two folks from EBSCO's um, UX team, uh, Shelby Domorowski, um, senior designer, 
and uh, Tammy Wolf, who at the time was with um, the UX team um, at EBSCO. She's since um, moved into a product um, management role with um, uh, uh, Locate uh, for Discovery. By the time, we were very fortunate to have Tammy as part of the team. And um, they really were super instrumental in helping us um, understand things from the um, catalogers perspective. We organized our UX to make sure that we include a range of library types. So public, um, large academic, um, and of course, the Library of Congress. Um, we made sure to include uh, catalogers in the UX um, uh, research that had different um, experiences with linked data. And we also um, looked at a number of applications, not just the ones that the catalogs themselves were using, but other applications that were out and available um, in the library space. So collectively, um, the UX team was analyzing those and really um, uh, delving into um, actual user stories they were able to cull from these um, interviews with the um, catalogers, right? So that was conducted as a series of one-on-one -on -one sessions and also group sessions. And we asked them about their environment, their experience, um, make sure we understood their current workflows, positive and negative, you know, what works and what doesn't work. And we obviously were very interested in uh, understanding what they thought was um, ideal cataloging tool. And that comes back to the idea, you know, the cataloger is always right. What, what we're trying to do here is not to get like a list of things just you know like be stenographers and say well they said this 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 and this and then that was it it was more the cataloger is always right in the sense that we really have to understand their perspective and if we're not understanding the perspective we're not going to be able to um, develop a solution that's going to work for them so that kind of empathy and that kind of directedness is what really really important in how we use ux to help direct um, the work that we ended up um, landing on. So, oh, actually I added this. Um, if you are interested in the methodologies that were used, um, this is a link that you'll be able to get um, from right now with screenshot, if you choose, or from the slides that will be available after the presentation. On the design side where um, um, uh, Shelby really shown, um, it was iterative. We had a bunch of um, A-B testing, and what I'm showing here was the laughably simple thin thread, what we call our thin thread um, UX, and I say it's laughable because I'm the one who designed it. <laughs> this was our first effort to come up with something um, functional, and then Shelby came in, and it became um, more and more refined until we had something that, will, um, that looks like this, and you'll see it in the demo. And the important thing here was that um, we just didn't try to make things look pretty. Um, the important thing was that we had a series of sessions with the catalogers, individually in groups, and we, we tried different approaches to um, understanding what they're trying to do and a workflow that made sense for them. And it was only after you know, experimenting with different things and, and showing it to them that we landed on what became the wireframes for um, the um, application. So um, it, where, it, where you're in a position to, to play around and experiment, you know, it's definitely worth the upfront effort, okay? I'm going to go to some learnings and how that influenced our decisions before we get into some of the other um, aspects of um, what uh, we were asked to discuss. So first of all, the direct learnings that we got from the UX. Um, obviously, there were things that um, the catalogers just love, and we love that they love it because this is what we love about catalogers, about order and completeness and having lots and lots of options for the workflows because, you know, um, there are different ways to, um, to conduct your cataloging. What they don't love, holy cow, scrolling. Man, oh man, if you can avoid that, do so. The scrolling was, uh, you know, verboten. Do not go there. That was, you know, loud and clear across the board. But they also had some very strong um, opinions about they, they don't want to be in a position where um, change is introduced just for change's sake. You've got to, like, explain what the benefit of the change is, you know, to help them understand and provide context. Um, so that was another thing that we learned. 
how are they evaluated? Not to be, and I'll come back to this, not to be um, minimized. Productivity is key. So what we took from that was it, if we introduce um, an application and the workflows are really difficult or are hard to pick up and that's going to tank the productivity, you may lose you know, support by the catalogers. So don't minimize how they feel um, they're being assessed. And then last thing here, um, which was a real surprise to us on our side was regardless of seniority, catalogers as a group wanted the app to help them learn linked data, which is to say that the level of, um, of familiarity with linked data um, was lower than um, their familiarity with Mark. I guess that won't surprise anybody. But it, what, what was a little bit of a surprise was there wasn't like some kind of minimum level threshold, you will, of understanding linked data above which you were all set. Every single cataloger pretty much said, help me, remind me how this works because I don't do it enough day to day to, to feel like I have it. So that was really interesting too. So how did this influence our approach to um, the application? So a couple of first principles were, were we decided it was really important to build a cataloging app that does linked data versus a linked data editor, right? Which is kind of funny because we call it a linked data editor, but that wasn't the goal. The goal was to build an application that the catalogers could recognize. And we, we think that, you know, we've made a, quite a bit of ground in that. If the catalogers can recognize something, you know, as uh, some, something that they could pick up quickly, right? They see it as cataloging. That's half the battle. So it, it, the, the goal here was to make it intuitive. The other part was learn from the best of mark. And what we mean by that is um, the from a design perspective, what the catalogers were telling us they really liked was having everything compact and being able to like see just about all, if not all, of um, a record. And that, that played an important role for us to figure out how to support scanning. We didn't want to markify the application. Some, some catalogers when asked, well, what do you want? And they basically said, if you can make it look exactly what I'm using today, we'd love you. And that wasn't quite the goal of the application, but we certainly wanted to learn what makes Mark useful to catalogers. And that's what we tried to bring to the application, not just to make it um, another Mark interface. And then finally, um, illustrate the benefits. That, that gets back to that kind of resistance that we were hearing from some of the catalogers about, you know, tell me why this is worth the effort at all. So, you know, being able to illustrate and see some real tangible benefits of linked data approach, very, very helpful to helping, you know, think differently about cataloging. All right, so on the front end, Try and make it um, clean and complete, limit that scrolling. Um, with respect to work and instances, we, and you'll see in the, the, the demo, we wanted to make sure things were consistent all, um, throughout the application so that they knew what works were and they knew where the instance was and that was um, always something that they could peg on. And we also, from a folio perspective, wanted to make sure that the linked data editor had a consistent experience relative to the other folio applications. So, so, so those uh, were some of the decisions we made on the front end. On the back end, what we decided was we were going to load both bib and authority records into the data graph that was the basis for their linked data um, environment. Um, it was really important for us to um, include authorities because by having authorities as part of the um, data graph, as bib records were being processed, we could connect those bib records, or at least some of them, to um, authorities as linked data, as opposed to just you know a reference to an authority. So that was an important backend decision we made. Transforming Mark into linked data and linked data to Mark is um, a given in a way because um, even performing a lot of your work in linked data, you have typically um, or not unusually um, downstream applications that rely on Mark. So very, very important for us to be able to make that transformation into and out of. And then uh, another important principle in the back end was the data governance. So that was going to allow um, 
catalogers and libraries to support um, mark and link data um, uh, workflows side by side and then have rules for when you want um, something that starts out as a mark record turning it into a link data um, resource so so those were some of the first principles on the back end all right change management so um not to be um, minimized. This wasn't a focus of our project, but it was it was something that we kind of culled from the interviews. So I think the takeaway here is that um, change management could be as challenging as the change itself. And these were more observational um, uh, things that we culled. Training is just one part of change management. So obviously you need to be able to train people in a brand new system, but you also should be at least cognizant of um, uh, addressing uh, impacts of introducing something very, very different from what they're accustomed to um, on policy and workflows, how that might change um, departments and their responsibilities, how that might change performance reviews. You know, we talked about productivity um, if you are in a position where changing it might um, slow things down, at least for some period, how are you going to accommodate that, right? And how are you going to be explicit with the uh, with your staff? The value proposition of the change, meaning, you know, explain to me again why we're going to make the effort. What can we do with this new approach to cataloging that we couldn't do before? And, you know, why is it worth the while? Help, having that kind of high level value proposition um, probably is important to um, conveying the kind of change that you want. And then identify risks and how they'll be mitigated. So anything worth going for has risks. So just um, acknowledging that alone may be useful, but also it, it's helpful for the staff to know that you're thinking ahead. And if uh, the risk becomes a real threat, you're prepared for it in some way. So. Collectively, we think that, that those are considerations for change management when you're introducing um, something you know, uh, as significant as this could be for any particular library. Okay. This iterative development. So um, in a, another version of this, um, uh, of this presentation, we go through the architecture, but that's probably less important for uh, this uh, community. Um, although we can talk to it if anyone's interested um, after the presentation. What we're trying to do here is with the editor development was um, our approach to um, churning things out, you know, um, in an agile way for the pilot libraries. So um, from bottom up, we started in December 2023 with that really ugly interface that we called the thin thread, meaning it's absolute minimal functionality, but we had to prove to ourselves that we could, you know, um, support the idea of a work and an instance and editing and displaying and searching, all that just very, very, very vanilla kind of functionality. That's what we were uh, delivering in uh, December of last year. Then in spring and May, we had the alpha release and the focus of the alpha release was um, starting to incorporate um, uh, the wireframes that Shelby designed coming out of the UX just within the application itself. And in September, we finished our beta release. And the focus of that was um, to uh, demonstrate the interoperability between the Folio platform and the application um, so that we could do things like data governance. Um, in November, we'll have a Ransom's release, and that will be some uh, hard coding um, or hardening the backend functionality. So uh, prepping ourselves for uh, March of 2025, Sunflower, um, the general availability to the Folo community. Um, so the point of this is that our approach was very much to do iterative, and we think we were successful in getting out things um, incrementally and to get feedback in UATs from the pilot libraries. Okay. Then Sunflower release. So um, details about um, the Sunflower release for linked data. Um, that's, that'll be packaged. Our baseline data graph will include bibs and authority records. We're limiting it initially to a monograph um, uh, cataloging workflows, but you'll have the ability to create linked data resources from scratch, dupl duplicate works and instances that are already in the data graph. 
um, open records in the linked data editor for inventory. So you can use um, the folio inventory application to be able to find work, whether it's done in a mark editor or in linked data editor. And then we said output um, linked data as mark for, uh, for example, downstream services. All that will, and more will be available as far as the Sunflower release um, next spring. Okay. Um, I'm ready to go pivot over to presentation or to the um, demo, but are there any questions um, before I, I um, jump over there? There's a lot of chat I can see. Yeah, so I went ahead and answered one question um, about did we interview um, catalogers with all types of experience, including those who have advanced linked data experience. And, I th um, and then the next question we have from... Um, Huda is, uh, let's see, oh, it's a follow-up from WolfCon. So um, uh, it says, I want to clarify whether the linked data app is connecting at all with the folio inventory model, which could be based on MARC source records, but is distinct from it, or whether it represents another uh, pipeline separate from folio's internal model. So um, we are building um, the ability for um, inventory to talk to the linked data application. So, um, in, so in other words, we're, we're leveraging existing pipelines. So um, a, a primary way in which um, uh, we'll create linked data resources is through um, MARC. And MARC records can be added just as they are today into the folio and through inventory and SRS, source record storage. And then we have um, Kafka messages listening for activity, both for bib records and authority records. And based on the um, uh, adding or um, uh, updating such a record, uh, we'll listen for the, for that from um, inventory, and then that will trigger a job to take the the mark record and transform it into linked data as part of linked data module. Great. Next question is from Melanie, who asks, uh, "What ontologies are supported on this linked data editor?" Um. So, well. <laughs> You want me to okay, Gloria, this is your your Bailey yeah. Why don't you go ahead. Yeah. So we started focusing on with, on monographs first because um, in partnership with the Library of Congress, that's the majority of their cataloging activity. So we're using the bib frame monograph uh, profile in the editor. Um, we also are connecting to Library of Congress vocabularies, so LCNAV, LCSH and we're going to expand the vocabularies that can be connected so that libraries have options on which controlled vocabularies they want to use um, in, with the linked data editor. And then we're also using uh, the BibFrame Light ontology, which we've renamed to Build, um, and we're publishing a new documentation website in the next few weeks that will show all of the mappings between Build and BibFrame, as well as schema.org um, and other ontologies. That will be published on GitHub, so anybody can be can contribute. And we've made it um, open, so it's under the public domain. So uh, we just have a quick comment from Huda, Huda who mentioned um, that having an app within Folio is cool. And the UX approach we took uh, seems to have touched on very important points. So thank you for your work. Um, thank you, but I want to also mention that this app will be available outside of Folio. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't just something that could be used within the open source ecosystem that Folio provides, but that it's also made available with its own open source license and can be integrated into any other tools that libraries might want to use. I also had one other question that was uh, above. I can read it for you if you want. Sure, thank you. Um, thank you. It is... Uh, is it correct that the terms work and works and instances defined in the link data app refer to the Ferber-based link data terminology? And then with instance and item, also terms used within folio inventory, did you find catalogers face any confusion with the overlap of terms? Or was the inventory a different enough app in the workflow um, that the overlap was fine? 
So we haven't really heard uh, many challenges in that understanding. Um, we didn't, we're not using Ferber based tech, uh, terminology here, but rather the bib frame terminology from the monograph profile when you're looking at the instance and in work in the editor. Um, right now, the editor doesn't work with item information that's still managed in inventory. So we'll add that to the linked data editor later. But Folio's model uh, for inventory was actually inspired by BibFrame when it was first created seven years ago. Um, so I think that there's always been kind of a, an understanding that we would move more towards a, a linked data and BibFrame centric approach with that model. Um, but we'd be uh, happy to get your feedback uh, on anything we can do to clarify. Do you want to take one more question or do you want to go on with the rest of the presentation and then take the question at the end? Uh, I'll take the question now and then, you know, we'll do the presentation and maybe we'll have additional ones by the time we get back. Okay. So there's one from Clara in chat and there's another one, but we'll, let me just go through. We'll see what you have time for. Uh, Clara asks, can your link data editor handle authority data creation, updating or authority data, authority work? Uh, updating or authority data and authority work can only be done in MARC and be converted later to linked data or bid frame. So I guess really, how do you handle so, authority data? So for the first um, release of the linked data editor, we're not um, supporting, we're not going to have the tools for catalogers to maintain authorities. They'll have the ability to look up authorities, but not um, the tools to maintain them within the application. That's totally, you know, something um, for the, the backlog, you know, we, we see that's the direction to go. But um, in the interim or for day one, the, the way that would be managed is um, in a folio perspective uh, through the MARC authority application. And that's where um, uh, catalogers can um, currently um, create and um, um, edit uh, MARC authority records. And we, like I was saying before, we have a, a synchronization job in place so that as those things are added or updated, we will then be able to um, make the corresponding changes and updates into the linked data um, data graph. And then there's another question from Jarmo, and they say, um, you're doing good work. Uh, so I guess, thank you for that. And then, uh, but looking at this like three to four years from now, what would happen um, if or when LC would adopt the official RDA description rules and incorporates expressions into the picture? What would happen to this trimmed interface with another entity added to it? That's a great question. And it's for the Library of Congress, not for us. So we invite you to take that to them um, because we can't speak on their behalf. But as far as us having an interface that can adapt to you know, the, the changes, um, we design in such a way that we could. So you know, those changes are TBD. But um, yeah, uh, the specific, that specific question definitely goes to the Library of Congress. Yeah, and we appreciate your input there because part of Doug and my jobs uh, are to understand what you need and how to build around your workflows. So if that's something important to you, we should definitely hear about it. Okay, let me um, pivot back to the interface now. Um, so linked data editor, what you're seeing right now is um, a development environment um, that we use uh, for building out this application. And you're seeing um, uh, a series of folio apps listed at the top here. I need to just move this down. Okay. And so um, we've just landed in, in the link data itself. And so I'll just gonna show you a couple of things. I'm gonna search on a term. So Absalom, Absalom by uh, Faulkner, um, we have the ability to have very, you know, thin or, or basic um, indexes for, to uh, conduct a search. And we also support advanced search. Um, but right now, um, we just keep it as simple as possible. You conduct your search in Link Data Editor, and one of the first things we decided to do was to take advantage of the hierarchies. And so what you're seeing here is, uh, elements making up the, the work entity, 
followed by um, instances. And um, well, uh, if there were multiple instances of this work, they would be listed um, one on top of each other in a uh, table format. And um, uh, one of the interesting uh, pieces of feedback that we got from the catalogers when we were exploring this approach to um, search results was that um, as a group, they found it um, intuitive. They said, you know, um, one catalog in particular said, this is like a massage for my brain. And she meant that as a compliment um, because um, the way the layout here is she uh, felt that she could easily um, distinguish um, between work and instances and the relationship between work and instances. And so that was one of the things we were um, setting out to do. So a couple of uh, things to point out. So when you click on the, the titles here at the work level or the instance level, they're hot linked. Um, so uh, if you need additional information about the work, we, we list it over here on the right. And right now we're showing all of the fields, whether there are um, uh, values or not. Um, but this is to provide additional context if you need to um, uh, inspect the work before selecting to do anything with it. And the same thing with the um, um, instance. Um, clicking on the hyperlink um, opens up this read-only space and we show you as much information as we have about that particular instance, okay? From here, um, we jump into edit mode. All right, so um, I, I went um, to edit instance and this is the edit screen for the instance and the body of the interface is um, tied around a work form, which is compliant with um, Library of Congress's um, monograph profile um, for an instance. And we're, we've mapped the um, properties from the mark to corresponding um, instance components that make up the instance entity, and they're listed here, right? Uh, to the left, we capture the work and, and uh, show the properties there for reference purposes. One of the things that we um, heard from the catalogers is, is that they don't necessarily do all of the, uh, the workflows, that is, aren't necessarily grouped in tidy instance and then work or work in instance. They need the ability to toggle back and forth. So we added this ability to jump over to the um, work form, and it's the same idea is um, only now in this case, the, the work takes um, uh, center stage and all the fields here are uh, uh, um, roll up to, to the work entity, um, including um, authorities. Um, we have a very, very simple um, uh, lookup. Oops, sorry, let me try again. Uh, no authorities, they must be working on it right now. But um, we have a, a simple um, authority lookup service where um, we're actually going to um, uh, be pinging the MARC authority application, this here, uh, the MARC authority API, um, and we're going to be incorporating that as the uh, authority lookup so that um, users, whether they're in um, uh, the quick mark, mark editor or they're in the linked data editor, they'll have the exact same experience for assigning authority to a work. Um, and then from here, they can uh, select the, the relationship of that um, authority to, to the work, you know, actor, author, or what have you. And this lookup is pretty sim uh, straightforward too. Um, you can start typing and um, the, the list um, it, it takes the inputs to narrow it. So you can do it either on the, um, the label or on the, um, the code. The code's coming from the Library of Congress in this case. So you can toggle back and forth between that and, um, and make whatever changes that you want. I'm going to go back to the um, instance, go back to edit instance and uh, show you one thing um, that we added here to help with the socialization, um, and that's to see the view mark. So um, it's it's not worth pointing out exactly how this record got, got in, just, you know, um, trust me that it started out as a mark record that was pulled into Folio, and then we took action to transform that mark record into linked data. 
But the important thing here is that that mark record that was the original mark record as the basis for this uh, linked data resource description um, is not the same thing as you're seeing here. Um, what this represents is taking data from the linked data resource and transforming it back into mark. And um, we know that um, this is a work in progress. There are things that um, we'll need to uh, amend. But the important thing here is we want to uh, connect with the cataloger and, and show something that they may be more familiar with and uh, so that they can see, ah, I can see the connections. So um, that, was, uh, that was an important thing that um, we added. One last thing that might be worth showing here is um, do reset. Um, under the actions menu, you can create a brand new resource from scratch. This will take you into the edit mode um, and um, directly into uh, work. So this is this would be the basic um, uh, workflow for doing original cataloging. And once you create a work, then you'd be able to add instances to that work. Okay. Um, and then let me go over to inventory and show you one thing. So as cataloging is performed in the linked data editor, we will also be sending messages as a, a, a channel uh, through Kafka to the folio inventory so that inventory is aware of all the cataloging that's being performed, whether it's in the mark editor or the linked data editor. I just wanted to show here um, in this um, development environment, you can see that we have both mark records and linked data records. The linked data records, um, whether they start out as original or they're transformed from original mark, once they're in linked data, then uh, the only way that you can um, edit it is through linked data. So let me find the Absalom one. Absalom. Here it is. Oops. Look over here. You can see right here source equal linked data. So um, if you were performing a, a, a query in um, inventory to find something and you landed on a record um, that has source equal linked data, then you'd have the ability to um, pull this in. And again, we're running into a an error, but um, uh, this, this would pull up the same record that we had seen originally in linked data. Um, Apparently, we're, we're getting ready for the Ramsons release, and um, there's a lot of uh, last-minute development going on there. Um, I guess the last thing I would mention is um, we, are so going, we will have the ability for a cataloger who lands on a source equal um, mark to be able to pull that record into um, linked data as well. I can't demonstrate that now, but that's going to facilitate um, the library's overall need to um, migrate from mark-based um, workflows into um, linked data when they're starting with the mark record. All right, so that was the 10 cent tour of linked data editor. Any additional questions? Let's see here. Um, so I mentioned um, a comment that in the future, when you view source, you won't only be able to see Mark, but you'll be able to see linked data. So JSON LD is a high priority, but we want to display other serializations too. Um, we aren't this, and then there's a question of how we're choosing and prioritizing specific serializations and views. Um, right now, we're doing that with feedback from libraries, but we also work with architects. So we tell them the challenge and what we need to do, and they tell us the best technical approach. And what we've heard is if you can show one RDF serialization, you can show them all. So we don't want to limit libraries to, to one specific serialization. Um, so we're not really going to be prioritizing, but just giving as many options as possible. And then uh, I think that might be the last question coming in, but um, while others ask additional, additional questions uh, for the recording, I'll mention another comment that I added, which is the open and linked data editor option um, won't only be limited to this app, but in the future, we'll also have it so you can configure that to open other editors like jQuery and Synopia. Um, because Folio is open, we fully support interoperability with other editors. So there will be a future where you'll have multiple options based on your library's preferred workflows. And Bria, are there any 
questions from your side? Not any other questions in Slack, and it doesn't look like there's any other questions in either the question or answer or here in the chat. I think, did we get the one? I think you answered a couple of questions in chat, Gloria. So I think those were answered already. Did. Right. Uh, there is one more uh, follow up from Christine. Um, is there's some way of linking to entities other than LC authorities in your roadmap. So things like ISNI, Wikidata, um, ULON, et cetera. So yeah, that, that's definitely on our roadmap. We are, uh, the, the approach that we're taking to um, uh, representing authorities um, in the link data editor is not specific just to uh, Library of Congress. That's the starting place. Um, uh, our approach is to um, open up that um, a way of, of connecting to other, other types, uh, including the ones that you've uh, uh, listed here. Those won't be supported on day one, but they are on the roadmap. And then again, the way that we get input on that prioritization is by listening to the libraries um, that both work with EBSCO to get Folio hosted and also are active in the Folio community. Which reminds me, we do have a linked data um, interest group, and that is open and public. All our documentation is online. Um, so I'll look that up and I can put the link in Slack for anybody who wants to join our next meeting. Be awesome. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to Doug and Gloria, and you have demonstrated ab admirably how respons responsive you must be from today's session. So thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the opportunity. It was great to um, talk to this group. Yeah, and thank you for Watch volunteering. Yeah, thank you for volunteering for LD4. I've done it before, so um, I appreciate you being flexible. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Yeah. Take care. Great. Have a good day.